Let's go back and let's add some powerful words. That's the most powerful part of speech. Everyone knows that. Say that to your buddy. Ready? Verbs. That's the most powerful part of speech. Everyone knows that. So when we go over here to our actions, instead of saying ran around the tree, what other ways could I do it? Were you crawling around the tree or did you dart around the tree? <gasps> darted. So we darted, he darted around the tree. What did you do? Did you go up a rock or climbed up a rock? Climbed up a rock, climbed. And then what did you do? Then I jumped into a bush. So let's put jumped there. One day, down at the lake, I darted around trees, climbed up a rock, then jumped into a bush. That sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and add our punctuation because it's our starter, it's our story opening sentence. I usually like to do the punctuation right away. So we have one day. Let's write the word one so that we can remember to capitalize one. One day, down at the lake. What do I put after my setting when I have a when and where? What do I put? I put a comma. Notice I said down at the lake. I didn't say near a rock or um, in a bunch of bushes. I said one day down at the lake. When you're doing your setting, the where, it's always the big location. Okay? So one day down at the lake, I darted around a tree. Ooh, let's put a comma. Climbed up a big rock, comma, then jumped into a bush, period. We have three verb phrases to make our sentence more powerful, and we've added our punctuation. I'm showing this as an option. You don't have to do this. This is just another way to keep kicking up those sentences so that you have more sophistication in the writing. We added our punctuation. Now we're going to go back and see if we need to add some fancy words. What in this sentence needs to be described. What is really important? So I darted around trees. Do they need to see the trees? Okay. Let's say the trees are important. So we'll put an X there. What about the rock? Sure. What about the bush? Sure. That's, that's important to describe that bush. Those are the things that I want to see them. I want my reader to see me darting around, climbing and jumping because that's the action. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing something towards these things. So it's important for the reader to see it. So let's go back and add, what kind of tree would I be darting around? So maybe tall trees. What kind of rock did I climb? Maybe a big rock. So I have a big rock and maybe the bush because there were so many branches in there, it was really thick. So we'll have thick. Now let's go back and read it. One day, down at the lake, I darted around tall trees, climbed up a big rock, then jumped into a thick bush. All right, we have our story opening. Story opening, check. Now what do we need? Actions, actions, actions. So now we're gonna go to our action steps where we have draw an action box. What are we doing in these actions? Our character can now do, say, or think. Now we have our do, say, or think cards. When we have our actions, the character may be doing something, saying something, or thinking. This way we can add more to our writing where we have that dialogue or thoughts. So we go over here, we draw our action box, and we have to ask our sequencing question. What happened next after I jumped into the thick bush? So there's our sequencing question and I'm using while or after. Well, I'm not jumping in it the whole time. You jump and it's done. So you jumped into the bush. So after I jumped in the bush and I'm repeating that action. So kids know how to sequence. They stay on topic by learning how to say this sequencing prompt. So we say it again. What happened next after I jumped into that thick bush with all those branches? We want to come up with an idea. The next thing, once we sequence, then we're just going to talk about what happened next. So what happened next? My foot got stuck in a branch. Okay, so let's take our foot and then we have our branches and we have our bush here. And here you are going, oh no, my, fo my foot's stuck. Oh no. So now we have our picture with our idea. Go back and we need to form the sentence. How do we do that? Always go back and reread 
Then when you get to the new sentence where we haven't come up how to say it, you as the teacher do not give them the sentence. You just say, who's doing the action? And then action, what's happening? Let's go back. One day, down at the lake, I darted around a tall tree, climbed up a big rock, and then jumped into a thick bush. Who's doing the action? Well, I could say I. Really, it's my foot is doing the action. So I could say my foot. What about my foot? My foot got stuck in a bunch of branches. Okay. My foot got stuck in the branches in the bush. My foot got stuck in a bunch of branches. Instead of saying stuck, what's another word I could use? Because we want to have a powerful verb. <gasps> Maybe what happens when you have everything wound around your foot? Is it free or tangled? So many times what I do is if I know kids don't have the language, I just give them two choices, one that's not correct, and one that is. Sometimes I give two words that are correct and they choose the one they want. All right, so I said, is your foot free or is it tangled? Oh, it's tangled. So let's write tangled here so we can remember that word. That sounds pretty fancy. My foot got tangled in the branches. We have our sentence. Now we'll go back and see if we want to add a transition. We want to see, do we want to say where? Deep inside the bush, my foot got tangled by its branches. Ooh, I could say where. I could have a wind tra transition. After I landed in the bush, my foot got tangled in its branches. I could have a sound effect. Snap, crackle, my foot got tangled in the branches of the bush. So we will decide we may want to have a sound effect or maybe we want to use a when or a where. It's really just giving kids different ideas. Or I could go to my transition board where I have a bunch of transitions to select from. It really doesn't matter. If you go to stage two of the writing, I actually showed the transition board. So if you want to have a little bit of a review on what that looks like, go to stage two are looking at my foot got tangled in the bushes. So now let's decide on which transition we want. Do we want a sound effect, a where transition, or a when transition? Let's do a sound effect. Snap, crackle. My foot got tangled in a bunch of branches. My foot got tangled in the branches of the bush. So notice what I'm doing. I'm constantly going back and forth, back and forth, rehearsing the sentence until I like it. That is revising through oral language. Instead of having kids write things out and having to keep writing, they should keep revising as they read their organizer. We have our uh, action. Now what are we going to do? We're going to say what happened next. Ready? What happened next after my foot got tangled in the bush? So let's see. I could have another action. I could say what happened next. Or I could say something or think something. What did you do next? Oh, we have a say. All right, let's draw our template. So when you have dialogue, you're going to put a template on the page so that you include punctuation. We have our action box. We draw a line with a comma and our big dialogue bubble. We're going to practice what is it that you said? So we're only filling in the dialogue bubble first. We'll go back and draw and write the marker. That's the, like, I shouted, I cried, I screamed, I said. But first, you only do the dialogue so that your marker will match. We go back and we say, all right, let's, what would you say? Your foot's stuck. What are you going to do? So you have all the kids come up with different things. And maybe we had, help, I was swallowed by a bush. I'll say, okay, let's practice saying that. Ready? Help. We're going to put our punctuation. Put a quotation mark in the air. Everyone go. And then talk. Ready? Help, I've been swallowed by a bush. Close quotation mark. We're going to practice that one more time. Help, I've been swallowed by a bush. Let's go to our paper. Draw your quotation marks. We're going to write HELP! And we're going to capitalize it and we're going to put an exclamation point there. 
That's an emphatic statement. Everyone go, emphatic statement. Ready? Emphatic statement. Those are words that can stand on their own. Words that can stand on their own. Usually because you're shouting or it's usually some sort of a sound effect, something that where kids can see that they stand on their own. So what do we have? Help. That can stand on its own. So we have help. I have been swallowed by a bush. Now, I like to teach kids when we first do this to write the whole thing out. Did I say it or yell it? Yell it. So I have close, I have an exclamation point, close quotation marks. Eventually, I just put two quotation marks, a starting and ending, and I put a couple of keywords there, and I don't have the kids write it out once they learn how to do this punctuation. So I have, help, I've been swallowed by a bush. I have the kids push their papers next to each other, their organizers, and I have them do the following. They say to their buddy, do you have a quotation mark? And then they say, prove it, show me. Because when I say, all right, look at your buddy's organizer, did they put their starting and ending quotation marks? What's interesting is many kids will push their papers together and then they won't even look. They just look around. So I always have them say, prove it, show me. And then once I say, do you have quotation marks, then the child would point. When they hear prove it, show me, they would point on their organizer, just like here. Here's my starting, here's my ending quotation marks. They have to show that. As they're checking their punctuation with each other, I'm walking the room to make sure that that's been put correctly on their organizers. Once we have their help, I've been swallowed by a bush, once we have what they've said, then we go over and write the marker. Who said this? I did. And how did I say it? Did I giggle or did I cry? I cried. Let's put cried. We go back and we say the whole thing. One morning at the lake, I darted around a tall tree, climbed up a big rock, then jumped into a thick bush. Snap, crackle. My foot got tangled up in the bush. My foot got tangled on, in the branches of the bush. I cried, help, I've been swallowed by a bush. So maybe because I said, T bush up here and bush here, maybe I just need to say my foot got tangled in the branches. So I'm modeling that to the kids because woo, 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 redundant police, redundant police. I don't want to keep saying bush, bush, bush. So I've said bush here, here, and here. Let's take this one away. Now let's go back and reread it. So look how we're revising. One morning at the lake, I darted around tall trees, climbed up a big rock, then jumped into a thick bush. Snap, crackle, my foot got tangled in its branches. I cried, help, I've been swallowed by a bush. We haven't finished our story yet, so what do we do? What happened next after I screamed I've been swallowed by a bush?